Hello, my wonderful dwellers of the interwebs. It's your friendly vampire VTuber, Sorisin here. And in this video, I am breaking down my top 10 things to know if you want to play Punishing Grey Raven Global. I've already done a first impression on this when I played the Japanese version, so if you'd like to watch that, you can find the video in the link in the top corner now. And with that out of the way, let's get on with it. Number 1. Truly Global You can access North American, Europe, and Asia Pacific regions from the one game client, and can swap between the three servers if you so choose. I personally have an account on both North American and Asia Pacific servers. There's no IP blocking in this game as far as I know. Number 2. The graphics are well optimized. At the maximum settings, the game has no problem maintaining a steady 60 FPS on devices that can handle it. The game is visually stunning. Number 3. Construct and weapon gacha pulls are separate, but that doesn't mean you only get constructs from the construct pull. You also get resources as well as construct shards, so don't expect plenty of construct shards or doubles of constructs you already own to enhance your evolutions as a free-to-play account too quickly. And if you're a free-to-play account, I don't think you'll be doing much weapon gacha pulls, if any at all. Number 4. S rank construct event gacha is 7 days only. 7 days is definitely not a lot of time as a free to play account to try and pull every new banner that comes out. So you'll have to save and pick your constructs carefully. At the moment, there doesn't seem to be any extended events. Personally, I'm waiting for the near automata event. I'm not sure if it will come to global, but fingers crossed it does. Number 5. A really dense story. There is a really dense story in Punishing Grey Raven and the story does seem really, really interesting, but it suffers from a lack of voice acting. I'd be much happier to listen and read a ton of lore if there's voices accompanying the text. Kinda like what Shining Nikki does. Plenty of voice acting in that game. Number 6. There is co-op in Punishing Grey Raven, but it's unlocked after reaching level 35, if I remember correctly. And it is a time-based event system. I'm not a fan of time-based co-op. I'd rather be able to co-op whenever I feel like it. The co-op event is pretty fun, and you can earn up to 5-star orange weapons as rewards, though I have yet to see an orange 5-star weapon drop yet. Number 7. There is absolutely zero autoplay. All the main missions and every other combat mission is manual combat only. There is no auto at all. You can sweep missions you have completed, but if you're farming for resources in the resource dungeons, you have to farm them manually. Something I have no problem with since the combat is so much fun. Number 8. Don't use your S rank selector straight away. I'd recommend using your free non-event summoning tickets until you unlock the Sympathy S rank after your 4th x 10 pull. Because you might get the same S rank that you chose from the selector ticket. The reason I say to use the base summon tickets is because these tickets cannot be used for event summons. This way, you'll have two S rank constructs in your party early on in the game. Number 9. Once you unlock the dorm, do not neglect it. Your constructs will sometimes give you gifts, and completing all the dorm dailies provides you with more gifts which have various construct gifts inside to raise their affinity with you. Which when raised up, will unlock special features like more lore and sound files. And finally number 10, there are also bounties. Don't forget the bounty missions. They can be easily overlooked, but if you go to the missions section and look in the bottom left corner, you'll find your bounty missions. You can have three bounties active per week, and each of the three bounties have three choices within. I usually just pick the S rank bounties or ones with construct gacha tickets. These provide you with some easy rewards, so try not to forget them. And of course, our little bonus round so this is technically number 11. 
there has been a fair amount of controversy surrounding the game. During the early days of the release, players were not happy that the global shop was more expensive than the Asian counterparts. Also, the recent event was originally too short and wasn't free to play friendly whatsoever. I also heard that there was also drama on the official Discord, but I wasn't witness to that. The developers have posted dev reports which have addressed most of the issues people have had. And I believe that for the most part, they are trying to appease the player base and give them what they want. I'm still enjoying the game personally, and I just hit Commandant level 50 earlier. I hope that you'll consider giving this game a try. It's a lot of fun, and one of the better mobile games out there. So that's my top 10 things to know if you want to play Punishing Grey Raven Global. I hope you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe if you did, and also perhaps hit the bell icon if you'd like to stay up to date on all my upcoming content. All my social links are in my description below, I'm mainly active on my Instagram and Twitter so please follow me there for the latest news regarding my channel. Take care, be safe, this is your friendly vampire VTuber Sorisin, signing off.